for watching Chadwell Supplies videos on the refrigerant maze and how to navigate through what might be the best choice for you, your property, or your company. Today we're going to talk about the NU-22. NU-22 is a refrigerant when it first came out on the market and on the surface when I looked at it I thought this was going to be the home run. This was the holy grail for replacements of refrigerants as I thought because of its values and everything that it did, it was going to be one of the better choices. But after looking at it and really going after NU-22, it does work. It does everything the manufacturers and all of your drop-ins are going to work in cool. The thing that I liked about NU-22 over the rest of the blended refrigerants is that the amount of refrigerant used to replace the R-22 was going to be significantly less. The manufacturer says that you use about 60% of the original charge. That varies depending on the system and the length, but for the most part you're using less refrigerant than you used before. Like the other refrigerants that we have talked about, the 407C, the MO99, the NU22 also is a heavy blend with five parts to its mixture. It has R600 as a part of the mixture, and that is the hydrocarbon that helps bring the oil back. That's the hydrocarbon for most all of these that do not require oil change is the R600, which is isobutanes and isopropanes. I say propane and butane. I don't want you to be alarmed to think, oh my gosh, it's going to blow up. It does have a flammable portion, but it's in such a small percentage that if I open this jug up, put a flame in front of it, it would not flame up. But the possibility of this fractionating to the flammable portion of the blend does exist, but it would be very rare. It would have to create, all the stars would have to align for it to create an explosive situation to where that refrigerant would be flammable. Um, NU-22, again, has a fractionation value, and we discussed that in the previous videos, of about 9 to 11 degrees. When we introduce this refrigerant in, because of the fractionation value, it has to be done as a liquid. And NU-22, or NU-22B, um, also is charged in just like the MO99, the 407C, in that you're going to do your superheat and subcooling, but you're not going to use traditional numbers. You're going to use your dew point and bubble point numbers. And with NU-22, they have those dew point and bubble point numbers on the bottom of their box. So that way when you do invert the box and you're trying to achieve that 40 degree evaporator, it is similar to MO99 in that we're looking for a dew pressure for a 40 degree evaporator of 59. So you'll read 59 pressure on your gauge and that converts to 40 degree temperature. Then we take the actual line temperature, the difference between the two numbers tells me the superheat, and you would adjust the superheat based on the conditions for that particular unit or that day, depending on the indoor temperatures, outdoor temperatures, and your dry and wet bulbs. I like this one because of that, you use less, therefore in my mind I thought it was going to be less costly. But again, we're back to the same situation. No matter which one of the refrigerants you choose to go with, we need to make sure we replace those seals, replace the valve stems, ensure that you have the brass neoframe caps with the elastomer washers so that when you tighten them down we're making a good seal and we're not trying to use the old ones. Make an attempt to make your base valves as leak free as you possibly can. The other part is, is if I put this in there and I do create a leak, if portions of the blend leak out, then it's fractionated to something different. If you try to recharge or top it off, what traditionally happens is you start to lose even more capacity and efficiency. NU22B, because of that, I value it a little better than the MO99, but it's not quite as efficient as the MO99, but none of them are as efficient or capacity as R22. The only exception is if 410A. Anything you can do to get yourself over to 410A is always going to be the best scenario. 
just understand that we have all the refrigerants, no matter which way you choose to go. NU22 would be a great alternative to go to, but there may be better choices in our industry.